You're listening to Podcast PXN, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. Let's do this. What's up, guys? Welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 110. I am one of your hosts, Daniel Prindle, a.k.a. Dan is DTM on Twitter, and I am joined over Discord by the Nintendo aficionado, Roshan at Roro. And the host of Large Popcorn and Video Essayist Christian Messias at ISO Christian. Guys, how are you? Doing good. Doing, feeling good after that intro. <laughs> Could be better on my end, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you to everyone watching us live and participating in the chat. Just as a reminder, we are live each and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube. Just search podcast PXN and you will find us on there as well as twitch.tv slash podcast PXN and Twitter as well. Guys, the topic of the show this week is, of course, Halo Infinite's eight minutes of campaign goodness that we got in our impressions of that. Of course, I had to make it some Halo stuff, guys. I apologize. Uh, But before we go into the PXN News of the Week, Christian, let me just toss it to you. Okay, yes. I have a big update for everyone. I promise it's video game related, so just stick with me for just just a minute here. Uh, last last afternoon, um, a pipe burst in the city uh, on our street here, and uh, it water came out of it, completely flooded the um, basement storage of our apartment complex. I've had no water for about 24 hours. I, I stink. I, I need I need a shower desperately. However, um, in that basement, I had a box oh, of a no. bunch of bunch of old video games. Um, from what I hear, it's about three feet of water, and I, I know for a fact that box was on the bottom, not on top of any shelves, so I just want to take a quick second to, uh, to just a moment praise, of or just to play a moment, yeah, three seconds yeah. of a moment of silence, uh, for the, my, my Super Nintendo games, who I probably will never get to play again. Oh, that's... Silence, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh man, that's, that's so awful. that is sad. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. We we've, we've got we got them on Switch now, so I'll I'll <laughs> an excuse to play them, I guess. For $50 they're on the Switch. <laughs> that sucks. That 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 is awful. I I did not expect that that news and that is that is not good. I I am so sorry for you, Christian. That sucks. That's life, baby. That's life. <laughs> that is life. Yes. Comes at you fast. <sighs> All right. Oh, well, I don't know how we're going to continue, but we must continue on <laughs> to press on. the PXN News of the Week, guys. The first, <laughs> actually, we're going to start with Christian's brand new Quick Bites segment that he started last week. So jump into some Quick Bites, guys. Ro, do you have some music? Are you going to? Oh, oh, let's see. Uh, I forgot the, what I did last <laughs> time, so it's going to be completely different. I need to write down the notes on the spreadsheet so I could just do the same one next time. But let's go with this. Burner. Burner, burner, burner. Boop, boop, boop. All right. <laughs> it was like a mix of Mario and like my own little twist on it. I, I, I like it. I like it. It was good. It was good. <laughs> All right. So the quick bites, I'm just going to read out the quick bites and we can go one at a time. Just if you have something to say about it, just go out and say it and then I'll move on to the next one. We'll make them quick, quick and fast. Uh, the first item among us is coming to Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation 5 on December 14th. Very interested to see how this does on uh, consoles. Obviously, it blew up on PC um, many years after the game came out. So very interested to, to see how this one pans out, guys. Congrats to Inner Sloth. Like, this rocks. Yes, good for them. All more consoles, obviously, good news for everybody. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Also, our next quick bite, Microsoft is bringing Twitch streaming back to the Xbox dashboard. Uh, They had removed it a long time ago when they had Mixer integration, and they were like, oh, Mixer, Mixer, Mixer. Glad this is back because obviously Twitch is, uh, you know, the most used streaming platform out there, so it makes it easier for people, but it's a cool feature to have back on the Xbox dashboard. I missed the Switch feature. Oh, sorry, go ahead. (laughs) 
No, I was just going to ask if, like, how PlayStation has Twitch integrated. Like, can you stream from Xbox directly to Twitch now? Is that also you, one of the things you can do? You could before. It's just you had to use the Twitch app. So, like, you had to open the Twitch app and then go through the convoluted process of going through that. But now mm-hmm. they're building it straight into the dashboard. So you can just, you know, press your Xbox guide button and just do it right from the guide. So uh, it's a lot easier with this new update. So Nice. Yes. Thank you. Um, and our last quick bite, guys, is Sony is reportedly happy with Kenna Bridge of Spirits sales, which have rec- recouped development costs of the game. Uh, I thought this was a really cool story uh, for a small independent developer, Ember Labs. And uh, it's, a, it's a really cool story because the game always like it showed very well. It looks very you know cool and stylized and stuff like that. So I'm glad to see that this game has already recouped development costs and maybe possibly get a sequel yeah that mm-hmm. was a very good game that it desperately needed some modernization so like I'm, I'm i'm happy to see that sony is happy and i'm sure amber labs is happy with the people that bought it so can't wait for whatever they uh, do next whether that's a Kana sequel or not exactly yeah that's exactly what i was going to say i was like if it's a sequel great if it's i'm just happy that they got the money back to do potentially something else in the future like christian said whether it's a sequel or something else Definitely happy for them as well. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to play it yet, but still definitely on my list to, to check out eventually. Absolutely. Um, now moving out of our quick bites into our PXN News of the Week, guys. The state of play for October 27th. Uh, there was some some highlights in there. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Are there highlights? Uh, so <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it, were you guys impressed by this or like were you just like hey maybe we could have not done with a state of play for these these things that were announced were you guys excited for anything in particular that they announced uh i was not i was not excited for anything (laughs) that they announced today um i feel like i was a little bit excited for a little devil inside and then they showed off what they did today and now i'm not super excited for little devil inside um, kind of did the opposite of what I think they were trying to do for me personally. Um, I did like a little bit of what I saw for that, but a uh, majority of it didn't just didn't work for me for whatever reason. Um, Bug Snacks gets a free update. That's that's pretty cool for anybody who's still interested in diving back in or picking it up for the first time. So that's cool. They're getting another update for that. But besides that, there was nothing really that uh, that stood out to me really? Uh, really from this one. Yeah. What, 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 no, what are you? Because I'm thinking of one game in particular that's very up you and our, uh, ours, Alex. Are you talking? May I guess which one it is? Yeah, please. <laughs> is it We Are OFK? Well, of course yeah. it is, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I did like that that trailer there. Uh, that's been on my list for like on Steam right. for for a while now. So it is cool that it's coming for to PS5 and PS4 as well. Um, but again, this isn't something that that. I, it's something that I knew about, so when I saw it, I was like, okay, cool, it's coming to PS4, but it's, it was something that I was already aware of and excited for it to begin with, so it being here is great, awesome that it's coming to PlayStation 4, but it didn't be like, oh my god, yes, let's go, oh, okay, it's going to PS4, it wasn't wasn't like that for me, but uh, again, maybe it turns more people onto it, and it gets more attention, so that's good, but yes, OFK looks awesome, Christian, I'm excited for that, for sure. Yeah, if if anything, the state of play, like, I enjoyed the indie representation today. However, like there's just no there was no pops. I thought it was too short for its own good. Like there was nothing really to to show off other than maybe arguably the the Capcom announcement or sorry, Square Enix, I don't know why I said Capcom. Square Enix announcement of the new uh, Star Ocean. But then they even didn't even end on that. They ended on the little double inside, which to me like that felt like it should have been placed maybe more in the middle. So aside from like some pacing issues and I don't know. Like it, it was just a very poor presentation overall and the big takeaway on twitter is that it it could have been some kind of blog post and to that i to that i mean i agree with but i argue that you know blog posts don't even get read half the time so i I understand why they want to get eyes on some of these these games coming out but yeah arguably probably one of the weaker state of plays that came out that have come out recently right do you do you guys think that like the name state of play has just been elevated to another level because like all of them have been so good like so to have something like it just sub you know subpar like if this had been called like an indie look or something uh instead of state of play do you guys think that would have made a difference 
So I, 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 first of all, I've never seen a good state of play. I don't think like they're, they're, oh. they're, they're, they are spread. Maybe the one where they like looked at, um, like the, la- they announced the last of us, uh, release date, like that happened as state of play. But to me, like they're so inconsistent in terms of like what's actually in them. Like what state of play desperately needs is, um, like any kind of, uh, like a sub name, like a colon. And then the indie showcase, state of play, indie showcase, state of play, you know, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not a marketing guy, so <laughs> I don't know if I'm if I'm even making sense here. But they need something else. Like when we hear PlayStation Showcase, we know what to expect. When we hear State of Play, it's a mixed bag. We never know what we're gonna get in that. True. Yeah, I, I agree with Christian. Where as the the State of Plays for me as well, they've been some good ones, and I don't think I'd be so down on them as I have been on, on this one most of the time, even if it is a quote unquote lackluster one, there's there's usually something that I like. And this one is just it was kind of very bare bones for me. And I agree that it it is usually very uh inconsistent with what uh with what they show. And it, I think it's more often that we get a mediocre state of play than a banger. Uh so hopefully uh they do do what you both are suggesting and they kind of differentiate uh or make it more uh, temper our expectations a bit better before leading into one to let us know, oh, this is what's going to be there. This is the type of state of play you can expect. And to be to be fair, they do do that some, sometimes, and they do let us know ahead of time, and just the internet is is the internet sometimes, and they hype things up when even when the expectations are set. But it would be nicer to be a little bit more transparent and clear so we don't get these, this sort of fallout at the end, which I don't think a, anybody's really angry, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh dang I mean, it, you didn't show a great show. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, like, legit, though, like, data plays have the potential to be, like, high presentations. Like, when they do focus on, like, a single game and they intermix small announcements here, there, here and there, like, those are great. The one where they focused on, like, the Horizon Forbidden West uh, gameplay presentation, that was a state of play, and that was fantastic. Other times, we just get, you know whatever is on the back burner that they need to put out because it's almost the end of the year. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. May, like maybe they're missing that horizon type game here. And maybe if that was here, then we would, you know, we would be like, Oh, that was pretty good. But mm-hmm. yeah, not even a call of duty at this one. <laughs> I would have thought. Yeah. True. Uh, moving on guys, a quiet place. You may have heard of this movie as we were talking about movies in the uh, pre-show here. Uh, a Quiet Place video game is in development at uh, Saber Interactive, uh, Illogica, and Epitome. I'm going to guess that that's what the name of the developer is. Uh, and it is apparently telling the untold story of survival in the A Quiet Place universe. And it's essentially suggesting that it will not follow the events of the acclaimed movies from John Krasinski. So I thought this was very interesting uh the whole premise of the movie is awesome and i loved the movie i thought the movie was really good um there is there a part two or is that that out yet yep okay part two already came out i haven't seen it i haven't seen part two so i don't christian was it was this year was part two good yeah it was really good okay so yeah I, i i would be super stoked to see like this in video game form like it's almost like it's almost like you're you know, you're playing The Last of Us for the first time and you're trying to sneak through like clickers without making noises except obviously in Last The Last of Us you can still like speak to one another like this is like that tenfold because you can't talk like you start talking and you're going to have these creatures running from 20 million miles away or whatever. Uh so I think this is very interesting and I'm kind of interested to see how they hey, they handle this. Um I'm not as familiar with the developers here. Um, Saber Interactive, I know, made uh, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, the anniversary treatment. Um, so I'm not really too familiar with the other ones. Uh, apparently, Illogica is a Montreal studio that has veteran talent from the Rainbow Six and Far Cry franchises. So oh. that'd be interesting, I guess. Uh, open world experience there and shooter experience. Um, does this excite you, Christian? I don't know, man. I, I when I when I hear this, it's like I I don't trust companies because it's like oh let's just try to modify something that's already selling in a different market and adapt it into a game and you know those kinds of things never quite work out. But I'm always like optimistic that it's going to produce a, a good product. 
the big thing for me is like how it's going to translate or if they do a different spin because it's, it's kind of hard to turn a quiet place into a video game like i think the strength of a quiet place is literally like the moments where it's just quiet and we're getting to learn like character development then that turn, like when we get to tense scenes it like we care about those characters and like that's what makes a quiet place so effective so i don't know how that's going to work in in a video game but like i'm i am desperately curious to find out what it, what that looks like so uh, one to keep an eye on for sure yeah definitely I, I think it would be interesting to see how how the the story of the quiet place translates into a video game with it always being quiet see how that works out in a, a video game uh, format um yeah, the, the developers, Illogica, don't have a huge history right now, as far as I know, besides like porting a, a couple of games like Laura Croft. So their only original content, according to their website, is Rogue Racers. Um, there might be more that I'm just not aware of, but uh, yeah, that's the, and it's a mobile game, actually. Mm. Oh, no, no, the, the, no, the uh, Rogue Racers is a 2018 game that came out on PC and PS4, but they're launching a mobile game apparently this year, but they haven't revealed anything about it yet. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to see what it looks like, because it is, it is interesting to, to think A Quiet Place as a video game, um, but at the same time, I'm not super pumped for it. Um, I, I like the idea of an untold story. It's not taking uh, place, using the characters from the movies, doing their own sort of thing. And that kind of makes me think of like Ish from The Last of Us. I would love to see a story um, of like characters that are just in that universe, but we never get to really see. So I think that's that's a cool idea. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Absolutely. Agreed. I agree with your guys' sentiments. Where, uh, where's my Dune video game? <laughs> uh, kidding. Fortnite. Yeah. I know. I, I know. I know. <laughs> Shut up, Dan. Don't even don't even bring that up to me. Uh, just wait till our uh, what you got for me. Yeah, we'll talk about <laughs> that here. Oh, uh, <laughs> moving on, guys. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online's brand new N64 games are suffering from many performance issues already. Oh, not good. Uh, apparently there, there's a lot of fans that are upset about the performance of the services and 64 games. Fans are reporting of issues with input lag, sound delays, frame rate issues, and incorrect controller layouts. Um, common complaints focus on input lag where like someone says input lag in Ocarina of time is so bad. And somebody else says pretty noticeable input lag and audio delay in all N64 stuff so far. Ugh, not not a good start for the N64 games um, appearing on Switch, uh, especially after we talked about the price being a little uh, higher than we were yeah. hoping for <laughs> when they announced it. Who would have thought Nintendo Online has a bad framework? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. Ro, uh, does this just destroy you and like make you so upset at Nintendo? Like, why? Why do you do this to us? It does. It does make me upset. Uh, I think I was trying to see it on both sides when we talked about it the first the first time around. So this is just kind of ridiculous now that they're making us pay what they are for a product that, first of all, shouldn't cost as much as it does, and that it does cost as much as it does, and it doesn't work properly. So it's not that like, oh, we're paying for it. At least it works. It doesn't. It still doesn't even work for the, the price that we're paying, um, at least for quite a number of people. And it should be not. Uh, it shouldn't. Which it shouldn't be uh, a headline at all. So it's kind of uh, upsetting that that is happening. Um, yeah, I I saw like a, a bunch of clips online of what they're talking about with like the audio being all wonky and just the the controller itself being messed up. Which again wouldn't w not again, but wouldn't be a problem if you could like kind of change <laughs> button map the the right the stuff. But you can't. They won't even let you do that. So that's kind of sad, and and I'm not I'm not condoning stealing ROMs or anything like that. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying that there. And this was brought up on a lot of shows that I watched this week. Like, there's people who aren't Nintendo that are doing this better than Nintendo and not charging this much, if anything at all. So that's that's kind of sad that the big million dollar company isn't able to do this with their own games. It's not like it's it's their game. So it's 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 sad to say the least and and kind of uh upsetting 
that they're uh, that they're doing this, and unfortunately, going to continue to get away with this because it's Nintendo. <laughs> that's that's really the only reason that they are getting away with it because people will, will yeah. buy this stuff. Yeah, my hope it, my hope is that like because of the price increase, that now that they'll have more money to kind of fix. And I said this last week as well. Yeah, bolster their just their online platform so that these kinds of issues don't happen. Like if they want to continue to add to the library. Obviously, you don't want to have games on there that suffer from input lag, or especially like with the Mario Karts, like that's going to have um, like online capabilities, right? If I remember, I don't know if that's actually out yet or not, but I, you know, like that's important to the game. Sorry. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> no, I, I would just like to say, I just wanted to argue that, and I'm sure you you may even agree that I think Nintendo has the money to fix it, and they're just not. I don't think they need the extra thirty dollars mm. or whatever price hike that they're doing to get the money to fix like oh guys just give us the extra 50 dollars and then we'll fix this nintendo i think they have the money to do it and if they wanted to do it they they would do it if they wanted to invest the resources into it they would do it i just think that they're they're not doing it i don't know why <laughs> but, yeah. yeah i don't know do do you think they need the extra extra money well i guess not right yeah. i don't know and i i, I don't know either i don't know how it works that's just I my do. like yeah <laughs> I feel like uh, we've been like we as in like the whole com gaming community has been talking about like Nintendo's online infrastructure being terrible for the like the last three consoles that they've had too, and it's like what at what point are they going to actually look at that and say like we need to do something that we're falling way behind in terms of online infrastructure compared to our competitors and uh, I guess it doesn't really matter too much right now because the Switch is doing so well, but at the end of the day, like, they got to yeah. do something. Do they even care, though? You yeah. know what I mean? I so. <laughs> it, 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 enough to actually change it is the big yeah. question because obviously they care, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't I, think... I kept... Sorry, go ahead, Chris. No, go ahead, sorry. I, was, I kept looking at the controller scheme for the n64 controller with the pro with the pro controller it's just it's, just, yeah. it's so bonkers to me you know, i guess it's an excuse to go buy the other controller yeah oh man what a world what a world, what a world. legit though my answer to, to this was to you know vote with my wallet and, and not not support it and then yeah. i got hit up being like hey you know the the price increase for Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack is a lot, so we're gonna family plan it with eight of us. That way, it's only ten dollars a year. Nice. Then I, hmm. I mean, which is good for me, but then I, it's like, I, well, there goes me voting with my wallet, right. and yeah. I'm giving more money to Nintendo. <laughs> Technically less, yeah, but still, yeah, I think that's okay as long as you're not. I I don't know. It's it's it definitely <laughs> di uh, differs from person to person how you feel about the situation. Obviously, yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think they. I don't. I think they do care. Obviously, they do care because they make fantastic video games and all that stuff. They they care about the audience to an extent. I just think I agree with what Daniel's saying that Switch is doing so well that they don't need to do that. And I think whatever console they make they make next, it's going to do pretty good too. Unless it's a Wii U situation again, and maybe they'll they'll have to buckle down. But until that day comes again, I think they could just get away with doing what they're doing now because it it, it is the bare minimum and it works. And we're not that we're fine with it, we're obviously discussing it on our podcast in a negative light right now, but it, it's not something that they, it's on the top of their list of things to, to do, even though probably should be. <laughs> For all we know, Bowser, not the not the Mario villain, but... Right, the, Doug Bowser. <laughs> yeah, it, Doug Bowser is, is, <laughs> has been maybe even working yeah. on this in, in the background, but isn't ready to go yet. I mean, one would hope. Let's, let's yeah. hope. Let's hope. What a world that we have to make sure we clarify that we're talking about Doug Bowser, <laughs> and not Bowser and Mario. That's funny. Oh, man. Uh, moving on, guys, to something that will probably be very close to Christian's heart. Returnal's 2.0 update is live now, allowing players to pause mid-run and more creativity with photo mode. Um, so this, this is actually really cool um, for people that maybe are a little bit more standoffish for uh, roguelikes. Yeah. Um, it gives you a suspend feature where you can stop in the middle of a run. And this is great. And this is actually something that may actually get me into the game because before I'm like, I don't want to, I hate, there's nothing I hate more than having to replay stuff in games. So like if this, you know, helps me, you know, play the game and, and still propel myself forward instead of like getting like three quarters of the way through a, a run or whatever, and then having to go all the way back to the start because I 
had to get off or whatever for the night. So yeah, this is mm-hmm. very cool. I really like this update that they're doing and uh it making me interested in it. Christian, uh were you were you excited to kind of see these features being added? Yeah, I mean I'm already I'm done with the game. Don't get me wrong, I think I'm I I think about going back to get the platinum, but this is great for people who who aren't familiar with roguelites that much and who dread the kind of, you know, 60 minute to 90 minute long run and you know having to go you know life obviously happens all around us like we've got we've, we're adults we've got stuff to do maybe not all of us are adults but most of us i think and, 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 then, and then we talk to our adults so like yeah this is fantastic uh there are tons of people on my timeline who said like yeah now i'll give this game a shot because you know i've got stuff to do or you know if i god forbid you know, I need to put my console on rest mode and go do something else come back and, and there was an update and the you know, game uh, closes and I don't have the, I was in the middle of a run, like, you know, that, that sucks. I got lucky, I only had one uh, major crash, and uh, after that, like, I didn't really have any more issues. So, this is very cool to see Housemark be able to figure this out. I think another big one that I would love to see um, them work on next is just kind of bolster up their accessibility options, just to, to allow, because it is a difficult, difficult game, so I would love to see more people be able to actually play Returnal. But otherwise, this is great. Bro, is this uh, is this gonna get you interested in Returnal? Um, I don't have a PS5 yet, but that's right. You but... have a PC though. Wait, that's true. Is it on PC? It's not on PC. Okay, Shoot. okay. Never mind. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> never mind. I was like, oh, really? I, didn't, I, didn't I know. thought it was. Um, but I, I think this is great, obviously, and I think whenever I do get a PS5, these all these first party games are gonna be in like their best best versions by the time I get there, like whatever updates they intend to add to the other games and Returnal obviously on that list. I'm excited to to jump into Returnal whenever I get the, the chance to and uh, have that suspend feature because I, I obviously I haven't played it yet, but being somebody if I did have a PS5, I don't know if I would have played it. Uh, but with this, that's, you know, that's a that's a nice little uh, check off the list to uh, entice me more to, to dabble in the game, for sure. Sure. It, it it is game of the year 2021. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I eventually someday. It, it won't be this year though. <laughs> until December 8th, Christian. Sorry. Moving on. <laughs> uh, there's new details on Payday 3 that has come out, including the story, its setting, and more. So I thought this was very interesting. Uh, I've had a kind of hit or miss, you know, history with Payday, the Payday franchise. I played a little bit of Payday 2. Um, I've always been fascinated uh, by the idea of playing bank robbers and, and going in and trying to do these heists and not get caught by the cops. I think that's really, really cool idea. Um, but apparently Payday 3 will take place in a living, enormous representation of New York City because, of course, we haven't seen New York City in video games enough already. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was very interesting. It's going to take place uh, several years after the events of Payday 2, bringing back uh, s- several uh, beloved characters, including Dallas, Wait. Hoxton, Chains, and Wolf. What? Does, does Payday have lore? Like, <laughs> I mean, continuous thing. Sorry to interrupt. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious now. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, no, I don't know. I, it may, it may have a little, bit, a little bit. Um, but uh, they, they did say that they're looking to capitalize on the fact uh, that you know stuff and technology has improved so much since Payday Two came out in 2013. So you're going to see software giants, crypto, cur- cryptocurrency, mass surveillance, and even the dark web playing some sort of role for, for the gang, um, which may give them updated gadgetry and, and stuff like that. So it sounds very interesting. I'm definitely in- interested to see like how they actually put this game together. I think Payday 2 is a little bit rough around the edges, and I hope maybe Payday 3 can be a little bit more polished and, and ready to go. And uh, yeah, apparently they're going to release simultaneously on PC and consoles in 2023. So a couple years away, we may see this. I almost, I almost said next year, but you're right. 2023 is like a year and a half away to, to two years, but yeah. 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 So are you guys excited at all for payday or you're just kind of like, eh, we'll see. In the Venn diagram of like heist shooters is 
would you say like you know if rainbow is in one circle and payday is the other is there like a, a, a place in the middle where like the two fan bases kind of meet at all I, I would say so yeah i would definitely say so i i it's very similar i think to rainbow six like in terms of like the tactical nature of it i guess mm-hmm. i don't know I almost got into Payday 2 when that released. I used to watch videos of people playing, and I thought it looked really fun, but my main shooter at that time was Call of Duty. So I was like, I don't have the time to like relearn a new new game and get like hardcore into it. So I never jumped in on Payday 2. But what you just said about like the game uh, evolving to adapt like modern uh, like currencies or like cryptocurrencies, the dark web, like that stuff sounds really cool. Now I, I, I really want to see how that's going to play out in, in Payday 3, so... Want to keep on my radar for sure. Sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely on the uh, the sidelines uh, on this one. Uh, interested to see what it will be when it comes out. But as someone who's not uh, familiar with the franchise, uh, super familiar. Someone that's not super familiar with the franchise. And I was with Christian. I was like, I didn't know they had beloved characters in, in Payday. <laughs> it's like, what's the yeah. what, what are the lore and, and what's going on here in Payday? Um, so yeah, this is definitely something that I, I need to see before I get excited because I just I have no idea what it could even look like because uh, I just have no just no frame of reference for for this series in particular. But yeah, I'm definitely what they're saying in this article sounds really cool, like a huge New York to play around. Like even though what Daniel said is completely right, we we played in New York so many times, yeah. but I'm excited to see what what they what they do with it. Sure. Yeah, and my my legit take too that I wanted. I, also just kind of say before before dan is that siege is like so old right but it it still has its fan base people still play because it is it is a fantastic game i love siege uh but with the new rainbow six coming out uh, quarantine is that what i forget what they changed the title to Uh, parasite i think i think it's something else uh oh it's coming back oh it's it's neither of those it's it's they change it to extraction extraction Extraction, yeah okay if that doesn't land with people and and siege after a while just kind of hits a lull, payday might have like a space to kind of take some of those players who are looking to to play like the, those kinds of shooters. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, I could definitely see that. That, that makes a lot of sense, actually, Christian. Uh, but yeah, I, I, is Ubisoft still adding stuff to siege? Because I feel like they had been the last year, but I don't know about this year. I can't remember they've added stuff. They've done really good support on Siege for sure, and it's a great game. Yeah. Moving on, guys. Uncharted movie trailer came out literally like right after our podcast last week. How? What were your guys' impressions of this? Did you like it? Personally, I thought it looked like a fun movie. Uh, I'm still, you know, up in the air on whether I think it'll be a good Uncharted movie. Uh, it looked very lighthearted and uh, interesting, but uh, yeah, I, I'm still. I, I, cautiously like eh, i don't know what, what were your thoughts on this row initially um my first thoughts when i watched the trailer the first time i was i was so torn i guess because i, I was I, I love uncharted I, I would love a movie but ever since tom holland was the person to be cast as nathan drake i was like i, I was still so torn with that because i love tom holland great as peter parker he's great in other movies as well but it's just that we know him as peter parker right now and that's what's happening to me right now watching this movie (laughs) or watching this trailer just like i just see him as as peter um but i seeing him in the white t-shirt and the holster at and then he like there was a certain moment in the trailer where he was he's on a ship and he's like grabbing the rope and then he just does a pose with the gun it's like that's a nathan pose you look really cool right there i like that but A lot of the trailer was just like, I, I don't see you as Nathan Drake right now. I know he's playing a younger version of him, but just, I don't know. I, I Just the way he's talking, it doesn't sound very Nathan Drake to me. Yeah. And I could definitely tell that he's 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 not playing Peter Parker, Just but at the same time, I just, I just that's all I see. And then Mark Wahlberg as Sully, I don't think I need to say much more <laughs> than <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Um, yeah. whoever's playing Chloe, I think they're doing a great job for the very little that I've seen. I think she sounds like Chloe. I think she's her, her, uh, wardrobe, very Chloe-esque. Needs to see more of her, but I think she was the most accurate out of everybody in the, in the trailers thus far. 
Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely torn. I don't know how to feel about it just yet. I'm definitely going to see it. Absolutely, I'm going to be there day one, no doubt about it. But I'm just very, I don't know what to think right now. Yeah, as as opposed to like, I would love to just be so gung ho, 100% in. But yeah, they should not have gotten top billing ce- celebrities to play this. When I saw that, like, Tom Holland was Nathan Drake, like, whatever. Like, okay, sure, I guess I'll watch this thing anyway, if they're doing a young Nate story. But then they're not, they're kind of not doing that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I thought it was a young Nate story, and he's, like, <laughs> mixing drinks at a bar, and it's like, how old is this kid supposed to be? <laughs> I true. know he's not a kid, but yeah. we're so used to him in, playing a child yeah. that's like, it's, it's hard for me to switch. And then, yeah, of course, Sully, the mustache thing, like, I, I can get over that, but. <laughs> When I, when I hear Mark Wahlberg talk, he doesn't sound like Sully. He just sounds like Mark Wahlberg in all his other movies. So when you have those weird casting options, the ambiguity of the, both their ages, and then like you have Chloe introduced here. So it's like, is she going to be a love interest to Nate? That, that <laughs> age discrepancy seems weird. Or is she going to be a, a love interest for, for Sully? I don't know. Hmm. Um, which game are they doing? It seems to be two, three, and four. <laughs> um, how do you, yeah. How do you, how do you do four without having Elena, which she's like a very critical portion yeah. of of Uncharted Four: A Thief's End? I don't know. But then Ro brings up like, yeah, every now and then, like, like the airplane scene for me is what I kind of saw right. me on the movie. Like that scene, I think in the trailer, like look, looked red. That script, like it sounded like a, a dr- Uncharted sequence. So I, I just don't know. It's caught in this weird middle ground for me, where like I'm, I'm kind of buying it, but I can't commit all the way. Yeah. You know? I'll still watch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What about the, you, Daniel? <laughs> I, I, I'm just very confused still why Nolan North couldn't just be cast as Nathan Drake. Like, I get he's just normally a voice actor, but he literally is like Nathan Drake. Like, he even looks similar to Nathan Drake. Like, he literally could have just played the role. Like, I don't, and we could have got someone else as Sully because no, Mark Wahlberg. Hmm. <laughs> he, he's literally. He's in a live action show right now called The Rookie, I'm pretty sure. He's playing like a live action character. Oh, really? Yeah, so he. Well, I don't know how no, often he does. Wait, not, are you Nathan Fillion or Nolan North? Na- Whoever, I'm pretty sure it's the same. It's I know it's, I know that they're not the same people. I th- but the guy who did the. the it's Yeah, it's the guy who, who's, who's the voice for, for Nathan Drake. Yeah. Whoever did the fan film. Yeah. Isn't that correct? Isn't that the yes, same? Nathan Fillion, yeah. yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm right. Am, am I right? Am I wrong? Yes. I was uh, saying Nolan North. Okay. You were saying Nathan Fillion, which that is oh, correct. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. No, no, you're, okay. you're good. You're good. Um, I yeah. love Nathan I, I, Fillion, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, we're all going to watch it. But... Don't lie. <laughs> um, I was going to say, there were some weird uh, scenes as well that just felt super off when, he, when, he, when he's talking about Sam that just seemed... So weird. Maybe it's just adding. They're just adding on the extra things for the trailer. But he's like, you know, my brother Sam. Like, oh my 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 brother Sam left the. Cl- I don't know why the, him just saying Sam makes it sound so weird. It's, yes. it's just so kitty. I don't know. You know, my brother's. I don't know. Just weird. Just weird all around. <laughs> Very my, weird. My le- my legit takeaway is that it'll probably be no better than the two the Tomb Raider movies with Alicia Vikander, and those movies mm-hmm. are just fine. Fair is there enough. a second one? Yeah, is there, there is. Oh my god, I don't know. Is it there? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I actually really like the the first one. I think I think they announced the sequel, but it has has it came out. I don't I don't remember if it has. Oh, uh, did I make up a second movie in my head? No, I think they they definitely announced it at least i thought a sequel oh yeah it i'm reading here it got uh, delayed indefinitely from its march 2021 mm-hmm. release gotcha. okay. but it's happening yes. uh, but i've only yeah. seen one of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, well I, I, we thought you were going to bring us a scoop christian that you had the sequel you already watched the <laughs> sequel you had a, a early review on large popcorn large popcorn <laughs> <laughs> i wish Ugh. Moving on, guys. Xbox is reportedly developing a Wu-Tang Clan-themed RPG. 
Uh, this is very interesting to me. Uh, the game is apparently codenamed Shaolin, and it is reportedly in development at Brass Lion Entertainment, a newer studio that focus, uh, focuses on fictional universes that center on black, brown, and other traditionally marginalized characters, cultures, and stories. The studio was founded by Manvir here, Air, Manvir Air, lead designer on Mass Effect 3. Very interesting. And Br uh, Brenna Dabby Smith, which is Def Jam Vendetta and Sleeping Dogs fame. All very good. Very good uh, indeed. I'm very interested to see like what this actually becomes. Um, obviously, Mass Effect 3 has got some great gameplay. So lead designer there, that sounds like a good fit. Um, as well as Sleeping Dogs, I feel like is a very underrated game. Like, I don't know yes. what their involvement was with that, but that game is very good. And yep. another great game for representation uh, with an Asian character, uh, main character. So uh, fantastic there. And a little known fact that Sleeping Dogs was originally a true kind game and Activision was like, nah, nah, we don't want to do this anymore. And they took all the assets and went to Square Enix and said, let's make this game that Activision didn't want to make. So F you, Activision. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those true crime games were so good. I oh love, God. yes. Streets yeah. of LA uh, and uh, New York. Oh, yep. So good. Yep. Oh, good. I'm excited for this. This is this is some very random news that came across <laughs> the timeline this week that I saw. And I was like, you know what? Day one buy, of course. I didn't play the other uh, Wu Tang game, Wu Tang Wu Tang game that came out um, a long time ago. It's a pretty good one. But uh, yeah, I would love to see what 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 it's gonna look like um, if it's um, you know, if it's if it's sh codenamed Shaolin. I assume it's gonna be some kind of fighting, a, a la like Def Jam style. Maybe it's more narrative driven, like a like a Sleeping Dogs, but. I think that it could be very, very cool. Heck yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what this could be. I love Sleeping Dogs. I haven't played Mass Effect yet. I still haven't played the Legendary Collection. I know. I'm sorry. But uh, I do love Sleeping Dogs. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely interested to see what this will be. I, I agree. This is super, super random. But, uh, I'm, yeah, this is a, sounds cool. I'm, I'm excited to, to see what it, what, it, what it comes out to be. What it turns out to be, I should say. Indeed. Indeed. Big, big win for Xbox, too. Yeah. A variety of games. Yeah. For sure. For sure. They don't have anything like that right now. So, uh, yep. shouting out the two chats we have right now, we've got Winnie over on the Twitch stream. Thank you, Winnie. You're the greatest. I appreciate you coming <laughs> out. Uh, and Gilbo Biggins over on YouTube. Thank you, Gage, for joining us. He's saying Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Thank you. I, I missed that before. <laughs> uh, Gage it's watching. better out of context, though. Yes. <laughs> True. Uh, moving into the next story, guys. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy reviews have started pouring in, and they have been largely positive, uh, which I am not damn right. Yeah, <laughs> not to say I'm surprised, but uh, I'm glad. Like I feel relieved that it is uh, seeming to do very well right now, and a lot of people are are really lauding the story and like uh, the banter. I guess like a lot of people are like, if you like the banter in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, you're gonna love this this game because it's like nonstop banter, which that to me sounds awesome like i freaking love that kind of stuff like chris pratt in the movies like going back and forth with with uh rocket and all of that and the one clip i saw of the game i i thought was hilarious like you're you get like a split path and rockets like over here and he's telling star lord he's like hey don't go this way this is a dead end and he starts walking to the way you're supposed to go but then if you go to the dead end like he said it's a dead end and he's like see i told you if you freaking listen to me was, it's so good i love that stuff uh so yeah th these reviews are actually making me very excited and i i think i will pick this up um and play it i just need to get through my backlog right now but uh yeah the, are you guys excited about these guardians reviews listen damn the reviews i have always said this game looks good like it looks fun sometimes that's all we need out of a game it is very weird that the, that the internet decided this game looks bad when we haven't really when we only saw like two trailers yeah. i guess one and a half the second trailer was mostly stuff from the first trailer it looked fun 
surprise surprise the game is fun because the writing is strong and it feels like it's like you're playing as like the guardian well not the guardians but you're playing as star lord with the, you know having character interactions with the guardians i am so happy that people like it is it isn't a perfect game obviously like review reviews reflect that there it's it's rough around the edges it doesn't need to be anything more than that i think it just needs to be a fun experience i bought it last night and i haven't download i downloaded it today but i haven't started it up yet so i'm i'm excited to jump in Yes. Yeah, I'm excited to jump into it as well. I definitely was, I don't know, I was high on it when I first saw it at the Square Enix Presents, and then they showed it off another time, I was like, oh, okay, I don't know. And I, and I think I was, I don't think I was ever in the boat where I think this game looks terrible, but I was in the boat where, like, I'm not as excited as I was the first time I, I saw it. Um, but now that it's here, I saw a couple of trailers, uh, not a couple of trailers, a couple of uh, clips online, there's some other people playing it, I was like, no, this this does look fun. I do want to jump into this eventually. Um, I was watching Andy and Snowbike Mike play it the other day on on Twitch, and it, it looks like a beautiful game. I'm not going to be able to take advantage of all that because of the systems that I have. Um, but it looks really gorgeous for those who do have those capabilities. It, they obviously put a lot of effort into the graphics and the, the, the ray racing and all that stuff. So it looks really beautiful. And yeah, apparently the story is really good, so that's that's really all that I need to hear. And then I'm 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 down to to give it a shot. For sure. Um, yeah, and I, one thing I kind of forgot: this is the developer of the Deus Ex games, the newest Deus Ex games, which those games are great. Idis Montreal, so uh, they've been doing great work, and I feel like people have kind of mm-hmm. uh, put them by the wayside or whatever, but they've done really good work for sure. Um, a ga- another game, guys, that has gotten some reviews this week that has done very well and has almost the exact same Metacritic score, Age of Empires 4, which is a PC-exclusive game, of course. Um, and obviously, you have to be into that kind of game. It's an RTS game, so you know it's not going to be for everyone. But as a huge fan of RTS games, this has me also excited because I freaking love RTSs. I love Halo Wars. I love... You know, Empire Earth is a game I used to play when I was a kid. It was an RTS game when I was very little. I was like 10 years old playing that. But uh, I love that this is a a throwback to like the roots of Age of Empires. Um, That is one complaint that people had of the of the game is that it almost played it too safe. Um, it, It definitely, you know it harkened back to the original uh, series. So very cool to see Age of Empires back and Microsoft kind of reviving it, uh, so to speak, from the ashes. And I would love to see this come to Xbox. Like, port it to Xbox, please. Um, but yeah. yeah. Any any Age of Empires fans, guys? Are you guys Age of Empires fans secretly? <laughs> Sad, sadly, no. I'm no. not a big fan of RTS games. So they don't They don't speak to me. But I'm very happy for you, Dan, and for the crew who are seemingly getting some positive reviews. Absolutely. All right. Moving on to our final story, guys. The Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Remastered. We finally got a look at it, and I kind of want to get our impressions on this. Uh, I thought it was very interesting, though. Uh, San Andreas from this Trilogy Remaster is coming day one to Game Pass. So just San Andreas uh, from the Trilogy. And then GTA 3 is coming to PlayStation now on December 7th. So it's kind of interesting that both services got like their own exclusive game from this trilogy. You would think pr- probably because if people play the one game out of this trilogy pack, it's going to entice people to want to go get the yes. trilogy pack. Um, very smart by Rockstar to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, I, th- I think it's funny though, Christian, because we talked about this. You were the one I think that was hosting. Yep. And you're like, how are they going to do the same gameplay but remaster this? And I feel like they somehow did like the perfect like, you know, thing where it's not like this complete remake. And it is like this remaster, but keeping the gameplay the exact same, which is I I didn't even know what this could possibly look like until they showed us like what it looks like. And I think it looks really good, actually. And I think personally, I, I may get this because I'm a huge fan of, of two of the three games. I'm not as huge on GTA 3 as other people are, but uh, maybe this new enhancement will change my mind. Uh, Christian, were you was your mind swayed one way or the other by Dude. the trailer? 
I'm I'm so happy you brought that up because I owe everyone an apology. I've got cake on my face when I said that. Like, how are you going to modernize graphics while still like like honoring the same style from from the old games? Like that just didn't make sense in my head. And I saw it and I was like, this makes perfect sense. What was I talking about? I'm like, I am so ignorant because I I agree. Like the game graphically looks fantastic. It does have that same art style as like the earlier games, and obviously not like polygonal and low res, but ups- like there's like a shot. From GTA 3 driving in, in like Night City and like the, the lights of the cars and like of the rain like looks fantastic. The graphics are like I, I, I love it. I still don't think I'll be able to I'll, I'll probably play it because I have too much too many other games to play. I've already played those games like in my childhood. I don't know if I need to go back. But then I'm seeing stuff like, you know, the modernized controls of like uh, like GTA. I don't think it's GTA 5 translated to these old games, but like at least inspired by like modern control uh mapping and like uh, i don't know that kind of sways me another way to like maybe maybe it is worth checking out like you know if ps now has gta 3 why not download it for a week and have some fun but yeah oh i think rose muted. Uh, ro hello bro sorry 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 as go. as as uh gibble biggins in the chat is saying i was i was literally stretching uh, stripping on stream and you could and you could see the remnants of that with my hoodie just wrapped around my neck <laughs> and my my headphones half off i was trying to take off my hoodie because i was feeling hot but my my headphones are on the outside so i can't take it off <laughs> so i'm just waiting for a good opportunity to take off my headphones so i could take off my hoodie so i look like an idiot right now but i i feel i feel cooler I don't feel hot, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Um, but yeah, I think I was in a similar boat as as Christian, where I was I was wasn't I was kind of confused as to how they could nail this, and I think they did nail this with how how it looks. Um, I'm definitely, and I talked about it last week, where I'm not a huge GTA fan. Um, I didn't play them play, play these games back in the day, but how they remastered it, and from what I've heard about other people who have played these games in the past, that they are fun games. And how it looks now, I'm definitely interested to check it out, especially that one of them is going to be on Game Pass. Definitely seems like a no-brainer to at least dabble in and check it out for, for a little bit, even if it doesn't stick. Uh, I have Game Pass, so why not? Um, but I think, I don't, I was, oh, sorry. One, one caveat to that. I, I'm pretty sure I saw that it's only Game Pass for console, not PC. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yep. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, sorry, Ralph. But, that's okay. It's better to tell me now. Um, but yeah, again, maybe I will check it out. I, I don't know. Um, like Christian, there are a lot of games that are on my list that I, I want to check out, so this probably isn't going to be at the top of that. But I think it is still saying something that it, it, it got me to consider to, to check it out, not being a, a GTA person in the first place. And and what I was going to say was maybe I'm just a little bit I maybe I have just been become a little salty with Rockstar with how long they've been making us wait for GTA 5 or G- GTA 6 and how long they've been milking GTA 5 but I, I really had no reason to doubt them because they've always done such a good job with their games and they've usually hit it out of the park with their with their games and they're usually pretty good bangers so I guess I shouldn't have doubted them in the first place but uh, Christian was about to say something we did get some GTA 6 news today oh wait what yeah uh according to snoop dog i'm I'm not even even joking right now right yeah this is legit according to snoop dog dr dre is working on uh music for grand auto 6 Ooh, Ooh. exciting exciting so we're getting little tidbits here and there that's good that means it'll be like six years from now (laughs) (laughs) who knows remember when goofy said that kingdom hearts was done yeah (laughs) gosh all righty um Oh. I'm gonna take off my hoodie now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Put the turtleneck on. Oh, he's gone. He nope. this. He, he's gone. He left us. Uh, yeah. Moving into what you got for me, uh, I'll start. Uh, Christian, as I alluded to earlier, I jumped into Fortnite after last week's podcast episode. I was like, "All right, I just want to see what's going on here," because I used to play it a lot back in the day, you know, many years ago. Uh, but I jumped in and I was like. I was literally baffled at how many items they have in the store now. There is literally, I'm not kidding you. When I played Fortnite, there was like one, maybe two pages of items that you could purchase at any given time. 
there was not even kidding you 15 pages of items that you could buy <laughs> from i'm like what the hell and one of those things was dune i'm like jesus like is this like too much this is too much i don't need this uh, there's just so much in here right now that uh, no i don't want this Dude, so then i turned it off or print some money I've I've accidentally made it onto Fortnite TikToks where people like wait for store updates and it's insane. Like people like wait and have streams for the countdown for those store yes. updates. Yeah. Yeah. My sister loves Fortnite and all over her recommended page is like Fortnite update and it'll be like the tiniest thing that would be the updated like they oh like the patch came out and be like oh they have like a new grass pedal over there but they make YouTube videos about this and the store is one of them that like oh store is about to update in a couple minutes and they would do live streams about like oh look who's returned and stuff people love <laughs> the, the the storefront in that game and like christian was saying money 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 mm -hmm. yeah money they like their money um and then also guys right before the podcast started uh i i played something and that's all i can say moving on oh, okay <laughs> i think i know what it, i think i know what it is and yeah. You, you know, do, because I told you and Ro. Lucky as Oh, okay. I think I know what it is, too. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Maybe, will you be able to tell us soon, maybe? Perhaps? No, I, I, I'm, okay. not, I'm not allowed to ever even say what I'm involved in or yeah. else I'll be in trouble or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's what the thing said. Uh, but I, I guess I'll generally speak and just say, like, this is, like, a very early, you know, state that this thing is in. So, like... It's like before, like after the blockout period of a video game, but before like textures and stuff. So like it's very yeah. much they're just trying to test like the gameplay mechanics and features and see if it works. So, yeah, gotcha. that's all I can. When is it I spoke Christian's turn? <laughs> Real. Oh, it's all right. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Either one of you, Christian. <laughs> you Real, please. Okay. <laughs> what you got for me? <laughs> I wanted to shout out Gibble Biggins in the chat once more. He said, Christian better cosplay as Resident Evil Leon with that hair. Halloween is right around the corner. <laughs> uh, I already have a Halloween costume planned. I'm sorry. Great oh, idea, though. That is good, though. I, I totally see that. Um, but yes, the games that I've been playing, I have played uh, Metro Dread. I, I beat it. I finally have joined the club took me a little bit longer than most people it seems according to like the game clocks and everything but that last boss had me had me <laughs> in uh, some very tough situations but i loved it it was a final boss uh had a great time it was even when the final boss was quote unquote defeated there was still a little bit more afterwards that was hype as heck um oh, yeah. but yeah this is a, it was a really good game definitely on my game list as i as i predicted it would be because yeah it was a fantastic game from beginning to end and yeah that was that was that was really it that's all i really got around to playing this week i jumped back into animal crossing a little bit because the update is next week so i'm trying to clean up my island because it has been a while since i've been there and yeah that's uh that's pretty much it right about now nice christian what you got for me yeah uh based off some recommendations i tried out the uh, the outer wilds late last week um didn't like it at first kept playing Fell in love with it, kept playing, didn't love it after all. Oh. But I did. I, <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite a journey, fifteen hour journey. Oh Jesus! Uh, <laughs> wait, have you played the Outer Wilds, Dan? I actually legit don't know. No, this was my reaction to our Twitter conversation where you said Outer Wilds is better than Outer Worlds. I, I uh. still I still stand by it. Oh, wow. <laughs> like the outer, oh, the outer wilds is like probably like a sublime experience in gaming. Like the way that they handle like uh, space travel, like is, is phenomenal. But it's, I won't get into the weeds of why I don't love that game. But uh, I'm glad to be on the other side. I wish I loved it. Um, glad to like to check that off the backlog because that's one I've been wanting to play for a long time. And then I, I downloaded uh, Resident Evil Four uh, VR on my Quest Two. Had a very very decent uh coupon 30 percent off so i wasn't feeling that 40 buck price point um too, too bad in the wallet and it's insane dude i don't i, I don't i don't like being leon i know gage just said like, oh you should play uh, leon for halloween i don't want to be him man that game is scary. i just did the opening i've also never played re4 before uh, what 
I know, I know. I mean, I've only played the opening like on GameCube, and then I just never played it past it because I was scared as a kid. Uh, it's insane, dude. Like, even just like the minute details of like when somebody calls you, you have to like you grab the phone and you have to tap and it opens and you have to like put it to your face. And I'm talking. The immersive stuff is so cool. Like, I was trying to throw a grenade and I couldn't do it, and I realized, well, duh, you gotta pull the pin. And so I was pulling the pin on the grenade and then throwing it. You have to manually re reload all your weapons and then spray yourself with the you know that spray they give you in in the game. It's fantastic. I still need to uh, like set some time aside to actually put hours into that game, but it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> it's just so freaky when the zombies are in front of you. But yeah, very cool. You know what? I have all these games to play, and you guys just make me convinced to want to buy <laughs> Metroid Dread and Resident Evil Four VR. I want to play it all. I don't sure. Know. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, I uh, just want to do a quick shout out, and maybe Christian, you have heard of this. But maybe you haven't, and that's why I want to shout it out. But Subway Midnight comes out tomorrow, and it's a cool little indie game. It is a horror game, though, and I'm actually going to play it, even though it's a horror game. Um, but it's, it doesn't look like it's going to be super creepy, so that's why I'm probably going to play it. But it is an indie game. has a really unique art style. I don't even really know what the gameplay is, but it is a, apparently a video game. But uh, anybody out there who's looking for a cool little Halloween game that probably won't take you that long to complete based on the type of game it is check out subway midnight you might be uh that'd be interesting let me know what you think ro if you end up getting it because yes. i might check it out for sure very nice we're gonna slowly get ro into the horror genre <laughs> until we oh, get him no. to dead space <laughs> the oh, ro, come over and you can play resident evil in vr oh god oh. that is like <laughs> from zero to 100 real quick i have biohazard as well on psvr you can play that I'm sure that would be great with having <laughs> other people in the room that could totally screw with you while you're in yeah. there. <laughs> I'll just be standing in like the, the menu for the entire time. <laughs> nice. All right, guys, moving into the topic of the show, Halo Infinite's campaign overview. We got seven plus minutes of goodness. Oh, my goodness, guys. But before we dive into that, I have a small rant that i need to get out here because this is going to aggravate me uh dr <laughs> disrespect you may have heard of this guy uh he's on youtube now because he got banned from twitch who knows why Probably we literally don't know why yeah. <laughs> no we know why right we do oh. we found out do you know yet was this i have no idea when, you, when he walked in, i mean should i be saying this for the the bathroom thing yeah, the bathroom thing. Oh, was that, that, was a, that was that was one of the bands. I don't know if he came back and then got banned that, again, but that was one yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, he probably deserved the ban. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so he made some comments about Halo Infinite, and I literally can't stand when streamers make these generalized comments about Halo Infinite that don't even play the game. Like they they're on there playing Fortnite and Apex and all this other stuff. They don't play the game. Like get out of here with these comments. So he was take he was talking over the campaign walkthrough as it was being released. So this isn't like after the fact or anything. He's watching this live, the campaign overview, and he's literally talking over the campaign overview trailer with his audience saying Things like, you know, in order for this game to not be dead after three weeks, it needs a BR, meaning a battle, oh. or a battle royale. And it literally drives me insane. Like, this is a campaign-focused video, not a multiplayer thing. If you have that opinion, cool. But, like, you're, you're morphing your entire audience to have this bad perception around Halo Infinite. And you're putting in this perception that this game's going to be dead because it doesn't have a battle royale launch. That's so stupid i'm so tired of stupid comments like that like it's insane he even says uh he he did post an update later and he did calm down a little bit on what he was saying and he did say uh he said that brs are the only way to get viewership so i was curious about this i pulled up twitch to see what the top games right now on twitch is the number one game and obviously, the number one thing is just chatting right now on Twitch, but I'm not going to count that. Yeah, yeah it's like always like number one. Yes. The number <laughs> one thing on Twitch is Grand Theft Auto V. That is not a battle royale, so no. The number two thing, League of Legends, not a battle royale. Valorant, not a battle royale. Apex is, Warzone is, Fortnite is. So there's three. 
Minecraft, not a battle royale. New World, not a battle royale. Counter-Strike Global Offensive. You see where I'm going with this. Th that makes no sense. The viewership is driven by great games, and the vi viewership is driven by people who want to play these great games because everyone else is playing these great games. Halo Infinite doesn't need a battle royale in order to be a great game. And there was one part of what he said that I agreed with, which he did say that Halo can be an incredible experience for a battle royale. It has a sandbox that suits itself very well for a battle royale, which I completely agree with. And I would love to see a battle royale like one day if 343 makes one and adds a Halo Infinite or whatever. I would love that. But it does not need a battle royale in order to be successful. It is stupid and i am tired of this because all it's doing is just putting a negative uh, perception around halo infinite because it doesn't have this one mode that some streamers think that it needs uh so sorry guys i had to get that right no. out if if the game re if like let's consider the alternative right if the game released with a battle royale focused multiplayer first and hey, all the other halo multiplayer modes that people uh, of that you know fans of that franchise love I don't think we would have regarded that game. Uh, I mean, it hasn't come out yet, but I, I don't know if it would have, have been considered a success if, it, if that were to be the case. Because Halo fans would have been burnt on 343, kind of chasing the, the um, I don't know. The trend. The, the, what, the trend, thank you, of, of Battle Royales. Like, if they want to work on that post-launch, I think that would be a great feature to see that come to Halo eventually. But I think that, uh, them focusing on, on, you know, making sure they nail an actual temple title Halo multiplayer, first and foremost, is... 100% going to be whether the what dictates whether or not that multiplayer is successful. Yeah. Definitely. Ubisoft has shown us that chasing trends is not always the best way to go <laughs> about uh, your business. So I'm sure Halo will get to BR when they're ready or when they have, if they ever get to it. But uh, yeah, I don't think it, it uh, predicts the success of Halo Infinite if it launches with or without a bot or royal. That doesn't make, as you said, Daniel, doesn't make any sense. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I'm glad we're all on the same page. Then. I'm not crazy then. <laughs> uh, guys, this campaign footage, my goodness, I, I loved every bit of it. I, it was a lot more than I thought we would get. Like, I thought it would just be like a small glimpse into the campaign, but they really like peeled back the layers and were like, here you go. Here's this and this and this. We saw purple Cortana, which she hasn't been purple since Halo CE. So it's almost like, you know, how is that going to factor into the story because she was crazy at the end of Halo 5 and like how is she going back to her original form so to speak and like how's the new AI called the weapon that also is Im imitating Cortana so to speak like how is that going to play in super excited about that um, and that's apparently one of the core questions about Infinite's story is what happened to Cortana after Halo Infinite which is or after Halo 5 not Halo Infinite and I think that's super interesting and i can't wait to see that uh apparently you'll encounter marines that will join your fights which we saw a bit in the trailer where there's marines without armor like they're just like scavenged marines uh that that join chief on his warthog uh which i freaking love like there's a line where chief says oh you're safe now and then he drives the warthog <laughs> off the cliff and I'm like no that's they're not safe chief you just drove them <laughs> off the cliff uh, apparently the player is free to choose how they fight the banished, which, uh, I think they'll have similar things to like far cry games where there's like these outposts that you yeah. have to capture and control, which is super interesting. For, it's different, completely different for halo. Um, and also they showed an upgrade tree for master chief, uh, like RPG mechanics, which we've never seen in halo before. Um, I think it's, also very interesting, like all of the equipment items like grapple shot and your uh, shield wall, or it's called drop wall and thruster pack. They all have upgrades that do something different um, with each upgrade you do, which is super interesting um, to kind of expand that sandbox. Um, but overall, guys, like I feel like the, the game looks a lot more polished than the 2020 yeah. look that we had at the game. And uh, we they, there's even side-by-side -side comparisons of the exact same scenes, and it's so significantly better. Like, even Chief's armor, like, that initial reveal trailer when Chief's armor was so crisp and clean, like, it was almost too perfect, and now it's like 
it's rugged, it's chipped, it's got scratches. It, it looks so good. It looks like a polished like look at his armor, and I am so excited about this. My only complaint is, yeah. like, why did Microsoft like tweet it out on a Sunday night and be like, "All right, it's Monday, six a.m. West uh, Pacific time." That was like the yeah. only thing. Other than that, like, this game looks polished and ready to go. I know the running joke that I used to do for Dan is, "Oh, it's gonna get delayed," but like, no, this looks like ready to go. Dude, like it this is like presented as like a confident product like this, this is the halo that you've been you've been waiting for and that i think is like really cool to see and like i i'm sp- getting ahead of myself but like already like congrats to 343 because they're, they're busting their ass to, to make a halo game that people like want to love and i think i think they will to be honest honestly they're kind of selling me a little bit i wasn't i'm not like, huge on like kind of the open world i know it's not open world but there's like elements of that but then seeing it in a Halo actually kind of swayed me the other way. Like, huh, that's actually kind of different. That's not what I was expecting out of Halo at all. And seeing the RPG elements uh, within that game, like, uh, this actually looks kind of cool. And then you're getting screenshots of the game looking absolutely fantastic. Like, all right, I'm actually kind of excited to try this game out now. So it sold me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was, I, I'm the same way. I, uh, the open world stuff was something that I, I wasn't not excited for, but watching this trailer definitely pumped me up a bit more about it um i don't know how long time halo fans feel about it but i think for the majority of the people they from what we've seen it looks like a good addition and i think it's they're doing using that open world in creative ways with the sandbox that daniel was talking about about how you can like grab like a canister and just throw it at the enemy and it explodes and all these creative ways to go about taking on uh the enemies in this game which is I, Daniel, you know that I, I played the first one, but I haven't continued since. And that's just because I think it's just because of I wasn't there when the game came out. So when I'm playing Halo CE now, I'm like, oh, my God, this is to me, it's boring to just go around and just shoot with the same same few guns. And there's nothing really creative to, to do. I'm just like shooting, 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 shooting for hours and hours, which I, it's a shooter. That's what I'm supposed to do. But there's just so many creative ways that Halo Infinite is taking that. And I think they're taking that first person shooter and doing a lot more creative stuff with it as they should be able to do it as it is 2021 now. But it looks awesome. I am very excited to to jump to try this. Um, there was, and when we get trailers like this for uh, games that are upcoming, like say Far Cry or I don't know what else, like any story driven game and they're like, okay, we're going to show up the campaign today and they have like a six minute trailer like this one. There's usually some lulls and there's like, oh man, are they really spending three minutes on this? For this trailer, I was like, this, these six minutes went by fast. Like everything that they showed off was exciting. I was like engrossed in the entire six minute trailer. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And then they show something else like, oh, this is awesome. And just, it just kept building and building and building until that final shot with <laughs> Master Chief jumping into the descending aircraft. That was dope. That was so cool. But yeah, this is an awesome trailer. It sold me, someone who isn't a Halo fan, uh, to eventually go back and play Halo 2 and continue my journey. So I'm, I'm ready for Halo Infinite. And that's what I was going to say. Halo Halo 2, in my opinion, I've told both you and Christian this, Halo 2 is a huge step in the franchise. Like, playing Halo CE and playing Halo 2, two completely different experiences. Halo 2 far improves the gameplay of of Halo in general. Um, and, and that's... Obviously, with, from a longtime fan, I still enjoy Halo CE, but I obviously can see like Halo CE does not hold up well to 2021 standards. Um, Halo 2 holds up a million times better to 2021 standards. It, it feels a lot better. And the story is more interesting. There's more characters. There's more dialogue. There's more uh, crazy things going back and forth. So you guys got to play Halo 2. Yes. I refuse to download MCC for a third time, Dan. Come on. I can't do it again. I can't do it again. I, I, I believe you, but I can't do it again. Oh, come on. Uh, also, yeah. I, hope, I hope that everyone, who, all, all the people who were complaining that, um, you know, this game single, or the, the campaign needed to have co-op uh, when it launched, saw the campaign and were like, okay, now I understand why it needs more time to, to actually integrate co-op into this, this campaign experience because it's, it seems like way more lofty than the, than the traditional, like, more linear style of, of campaign games from Halo's history. Yeah, definitely way more no. ambitious. Yeah. But when sure. the co-op yeah. does come with that open open world yeah. sandbox, it's going to be super fun for those players for sure. 
exactly and you got a, a, a boy to hit <laughs> hit hit me up when yeah, you yeah. guys play co-op you know Absolutely. boom uh yeah i thought there were super cool things in there uh like the the weapon pads where you can call in weapons and and uh vehicle pads where the pelicans come and drop off vehicles for you where they dropped off the flying vehicle uh, called the wasp i love that scene so much uh and then at the end of the trailer when uh cortana even adds oh not cortana sorry the weapon she's (laughs) imitating cortana sorry uh she says uh uh is everyone trying to kill us or something? And it's like, it seems like that. It was just, Oh, I love it so much. It's so good. She's so innocent and I love that. And she's so different than the Cortana that we have from Halo five. So I'm still interested to see that story and how that evolves. But, um, is it good? Is it going to be good? Dan, do we think Christian, I've been saying it for a long time. Halo infinite is three, four, threes, Halo three. And Halo 3 is my favorite video game of all time, so that's me speaking very highly of it. I am so stoked. I think it's going to be very good. Um, and Iskarum, who's the one of the main bad guys, he appears at the end of this trailer as well, looks so good, and he seems very menacing, and I loved his... He did, like, a riff on the trailer from 2020, the Become master chief trailer where it says like become and it was like so stoic he does a rift on that that they also released this week and i love that so much because he's like pretty much dog like destroying the master chief in that trailer like it's a remix of that trailer and it's so good love it um yeah i'm so excited just to play that story but um, another another month or so month and a week or like right yeah a month or two weeks little yeah month and a couple weeks i've taken off i've already taken off work for about a week and a half of halo (laughs) oh man (laughs) yeah because it comes out on a wednesday weirdly enough here here's the weird thing it comes out on wednesday at 1 p.m eastern time so i'm like all right i'll take a half day on that wednesday and take the rest of the week and then the next week so boom I'll be on the podcast with maybe a few hours of campaign impressions that week. So, yeah. Hey, will you even make it? It'll be too engrossed. Oh, I, I got to make it. I can't, I can't abandon you guys. Can't abandon. It'll just be me and Ro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Dan. Yeah. I, I call in with my phone. Yeah, guys, I, I'm stuck in traffic. You hear me shooting in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. So good. All right. Anything else? Halo Infinite before we close, or anything in general before we close out the show. I'm excited to try Halo. I want to. I want to get it. I want to understand it. I want you to get it too, Christian, because <laughs> you like Split Gate. You should like Halo. Arguably the superior. Oh, the superior. here we go again. Oh gosh. I joke. Don't even read what Gage wrote in the chat. I just wrote it, read it. I'm not reading that out on the these airwaves here, Gage. Is it on YouTube? Let me open up YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. I there's no way I'm reading that out on <laughs> live on the air here, Gage. So I apologize. Thank you for chatting with us though. All right. Yes, let uh let us close out the show here. Thank you again to everyone joining us live on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, as well as podcast services everywhere, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Stitcher. I saw you laughing at that, Christian. Uh, Thank you, Roro. Thank you, Christian. I am Daniel, and this has been Podcast PXN, and we are out. Much love, and keep on gaming. See ya. Give me water back.